Meriem Küm. Hello people of the lantern. This is my first English video. That's because I wanted to answer a frequently asked question about which expansions to get and what to do up. And here's my opinion. I created a tier list. That means um, the expansions are ranked from this one you always want to get and this one you don't want to get. I will show you the link in the description and I will tell you what are my favorites to help you to decide at the beginning of Kingdom Death Monster. And if you are a content creator, you can use my link, you can share your own experience and make an own video with it. So I just wanted to share it with you all. So let's start. We see here um, the tier list. You can take an expansion and put it in your row. Um, S means it's a rich expansion. It offers a campaign or much game content. Many, many things that you can um, explore. And D means you um, miss nothing when you drop this one. So let's start with my D tier. D tier is for me the line god. It's a tough encounter with high strength and it's very brutal and the rewards you get are very, very low in my opinion. And I wish this god was more um, story involved um, or offers a campaign changing experience that this would be the last encounter you occur in a People of the Lantern campaign or whatever. But now how it is, Yes, I would just drop it um, if I don't get all 12 expansions together. Similar to that is for me um, the Manhunter. Um, it has a really nice encounter when you fight him. Um, the wrestling style movement and um, the introduction is better than the Lion God in my opinion. But it's completely missable and you don't need it necessarily. Um, C tier is for me that these expansion have a little twist that I say, um, yes, I want this expansion uh, because of that what's in there. Um, for the Lion Knight, I don't like the encounter very much. It has a nice idea, but the um, theater mechanism in it um, doesn't work very proper. But the sets that come with these expansions are for me um, a reason to buy it. Let's skip to the tree. Um, similar to the Lionite, there is also a thing with the tree that I like to have in a campaign, and that's the mini for itself and the fruits. I really like the fruits. I think um, there are a few of them, uh, too few of them, but it's a reason for me to um, include it into the campaign and it raises the difficulty by the special showdown, but that doesn't matter very much. Um, also C tier for me, um, that is nice to have, but not a must have, is um, the green armor. It's a nice story. It's a nice twist that you can buy it around a campaign about these few gear cards, and the set is really powerful and the ultimate goal to make but you need many other expansions. So that is one that I would buy at last. B tier is a um, solid midfield, um, the Spediculus. It offers a nice set, nice items, and a very nice encounter with the many spider links that tickle around and um, annoy you. So I would buy it um, if I had all the other expansions above, but I think this Spediculus is okay designed. It has some issues, but um, much of the content I appreciate. A tier is um, for me um, expansions that make the campaign much richer, but didn't change them so much. Um, they're a good element to expand 
that what you already have. The flower night is a um, good adjustment to make things easier for you. It comes very early. It offers super good rewards. So I like to include it to make um, things a little bit easier. Um, and that's the reason why it's for me an A tier. Dung Beetle Night is a little bit of the opposite. Um, it offers nice late game additions and is a tough encounter and also has very cool mechanisms with the um, yeah, with the grounding, with the um, farming of items. And so it's for me an A tier. The Slenderman is the only Nemesis expansion that I ranked so high because it offers very nice late game additions, um, items that I want to craft and that I want to encounter the Slenderman more often. So it gives a nice twist to the campaign. So it's for me an A tier to make your People of the Lantern year um, campaign feel a little bit different and a little bit more richer. The Gorm S tier always mentioned is good because it offers some early game um, choices for weapons. You get shields, you get grand weapons very early, you get an alternative quarry you can hunt um, besides the white line. So that's the reason why it's so often recommended and for me absolutely S tier that you have to get. Also the Sunstalker adds a nice campaign. Um, for me the best design campaign so far that you can get without um, community driven content and it makes much fun to play a vanilla Sunstalker campaign with the core queries and focus on the objectives. The Sunstalker by itself offers a nice set um, that makes many weapons potent because you can get sharp with any weapon in the blind spot. And that's something I appreciate because you can try some other things. And also the prismatic on the set that you have access to each color with each affinity um, makes other bites possible. So absolutely S tier for me. And now to my favorite expansion, but, uh, by the way, the favorite encounter of me, the dragon. For myself, it's the best fight you can get in Kingdom Death Monster. It makes very much fun to um, encounter it. And it comes with a unique campaign that's a little bit more difficult and more complicated because you have to manage the many attributes to get your um, star signs. So it's not my favorite campaign, but it's a nice playthrough and it's a total good um, final encounter and story at the end. So I recommend it. And for me, it would be still S tier but I understand if it would be A tier for you. So these are my thoughts on the list. I hope you enjoyed it. You can um, share it, make your own list, discuss in the comments. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Please let a like there. And until next time, KDM Kim. Die Kim.